Welcome to Celebrity Big Brother, the best, the worst and the unforgettable. Over the next two hours, we'll be looking back at some of the most jaw-dropping and laugh-out-loud moments in the history of the show. It's all here. The fights. Am I your boss now? Did I eat the Am chocolate? I your boss? The feuds. I you stinking French slut. The meltdowns. I don't want to be here with these people anymore. The lust. The love. I so don't fancy you at all. Oh, she did. oh my god. And the laughter. <laughs> Stand back. You're about to see why Celebrity Big Brother has had us hooked all these years. Celebrity Big Brother is the dog's knob. If you won't give me any more underwear, I quit. It remains astonishingly compelling. Hey, hats off to you, man. Go hard or go home. I'm back. Oh, my God, Jackie. Yeah, Jackie. Do you want me to blow for the cameras? You can't be a normal person. Every series, you think it can't be better than the one before, but somehow they always seem to manage it. Shut up, Gary! You are my worst nightmare, and I feel like I'm in hell. Celebrity Big Brother is trashy. I love you so much. I love you more. Bonkers. I've weighed me bad. Bizarre. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Just wrong. Suck my dick. It's super crazy. I know my shit, boy. Controversial. You're a normal house, mate, like everybody else. Outrageous. What about Frank Carson dressing room? Why would you say that? Absolutely awful. How dare you? Being in that environment, people, like, go over the edge. And that's just starting to scare me now. Good. Just enjoy it. I think the main ingredients for a, a superb celeb Big Brother series are a great cast. We do hate living with these people. You know, they're awful to live with. I wonder how hard it is to drown. <sighs> Don't talk shite! When big characters are with big characters, there will definitely be fireworks. My life is in danger here. Watching a bunch of celebrities forget that they're on camera and make complete tits out themselves. <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> so, let's celebrate all the ingredients that make Celebrity Big Brother so special. And our first category we're kicking off with is launch night twists. At number three, soap queens Julie Goodyear and Cheryl Ferguson join forces to create Celebrity Big Brother's very own dramatic soap opera. Are you well? <laughs> Big Brother wants to see what formidable drama queens you really are by right. turning Big Brother into a sensational soap opera for the next 90 minutes. 90 minutes? Right. Big Brother wants to see scandal, tears and tantrums. Classic soap opera action. We've only just got here. First, our soap legends were forced to test their acting skills on Jersey Shore's Mike the Situation Sorrentino. Cheryl, take the situation to one side yeah. and tell him you hate uh, Julie yeah. because she had an affair um, with your ex. Where, where are you taking me? Uh, she had an affair with my... Um, mm -hmm. She had an affair with my, with my ex-boyfriend, so I really don't like her very much. Huh? The girls were now warmed up and ready for their next hits. Cheryl, go to Harvey. Tell him about Julie's affair with your ex. She went out with one of my fellas. Yeah. Oh, that's one thing that you both got to sort out because you're in here for a while, so there's no getting out now, my love. Cheryl and Julie, you must have a blazing row with each other no. about Julie's affair with Cheryl's ex. Oh. Julie, you must end the row by throwing a drink over Cheryl. It's like being at drama school and having an improvisation. These guys don't even know the history or nothing of what you've done. Why bring it up? Yeah. What do you mean? Because you keep giving me the evils. Don't talk shite. I should come. Now look. leave come. it. I come. There it's is no history. Funny. It's not Cheryl. even funny, and I'm not having the looks that you're giving me across the room. Shut up now. I know, I know. Chill, come on, man. First day, man. Leave it. Just leave it, man. T V Gold. Vroom. Shut up. Launch night twist number two is when White D was transformed into a duchess and her mission was to convince three of her international housemates that she was royalty. One of the things that keeps me watching year after year are the secret tasks because they can set the, the tone for the whole series. <laughs> Will she come to the diary room? Oh, Will James, Claire oh. and David take a seat on the sofas? Okay. Here we go. Dee, have you ever wondered what it would be like to live like a royal? 
No, not really. Well, D, Big Brother has a very special secret mission for you. You will become Deirdre, the Duchess of Solihull, 21st in line to the throne. How does that sound? That sounds absolutely amazing. Once Dee's transformation was complete, her fellow housemates were called to the sofas and all was revealed. Is that Margaret Thatcher? It's brilliant. Your job is to help convince the next three celebrity housemates who are about to enter the house that she really is a member of the royal family and oh. 21st in line to the throne. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nice to meet you on Leslie, Jordan. Hello, Leslie. What's your name? Deirdre, the Duchess of Sony. Oh, my. Are you a lookalike? <laughs> Seriously, are you a lookalike? I hope not. <laughs> she had to fool the Americans, which didn't know who she was and didn't know any different. I'm enthralled with the Duchess. I, I didn't know. She's in the royal family. <laughs> She's 21 in line for the throne. <laughs> yeah. So you better go and curtsy. What did you say? She had her own butler and brought her in her own food. I'm the Duchess's <laughs> butler. I have your she breakfast, my lady. Oh, sh wait, shall I go through to the...? If you wish, ma'am. I think it was brilliant. And obviously, we know who she is, and I think she played the game very well. Will <laughs> the celebrity who has been hiding their true identity stand up? Well, well, Gary, Leslie and Frenchie thought this was the Duchess of Solihull. Her what? name is really White Dean. You <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was getting ready to go have lunch at Buckingham. <laughs> <laughs> and in the top spot, it's Celebrity Big Brother's twist on a twist that saw the first ever non-celebrity enter the Celebrity Big Brother house. Chantal, your secret mission is to convince the other celebrities that you are, in fact, a genuine celebrity. OK. God knows what she must have been thinking, because I was thinking it sitting at home watching. She must have been bricking it. From now on, you are a pop star. That's all right with me. <laughs> you are part of the girl band Candy Floss with a K. Chantal Houghton, she was, she was amazing. To be a non-celebrity going in a celebrity Big Brother house and fooling them, and singing a song as well. Yep, who can forget Chantal singing her fictional hit, I Want It Right Now. I want it all. I want it right now. I want it all. I'm just flicking around, flicking around, moving around, reading the words. I want it right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I ain't one to dish it out like I'm Sylvia Young, but she didn't sound great. Do you know what I mean? But good luck to her. I want it all. Her performance may have been a little bit iffy, but her mission was a success. Chantal had managed to convince her fellow housemates she was a celebrity just like them. You have passed your secret mission and are now a genuine celebrity. Wicked. I've passed my mission. <laughs> It just showed these days you don't have to be famous to be famous. Because she's not famous, but everyone thought she was. Join us after the break when our celebrities will be raising the roof. Would you smash the living shit out of me right now? And a glass. Welcome back to Celebrity Big Brother. The best, the worst, and the unforgettable. Now for our next category, something that our celebrity housemates can't get enough of, booze. And although we do not condone the drunk behavior of the rich and famous, we do love watching it. So pour yourselves a large one as we salute our roll call of unforgettable tipsy talent. Cheers. We kick off with our first loose woman in our countdown, the legendary Denise Welsh. <laughs> Denise Welsh. I love Denise Welsh. If I could have offered Denise Welsh just a tiny bit of advice before she went into Celebrity Big Brother, I'd have said, hold off the sauce, darling, don't drink so much. Show and show, on his nipple! Just mucking around, I said, Denise, it's Frankie's birthday, can you, can you get in here and get your boobs out? Like that, she's in there, boobs are out, and I'm like, all right, nice, I like that. My God, she went, I you know that shit. I you know that shit. Show it to me. Oh, 
She was all over the place. She was a bit drunk, she was showing her boobs. She was out there. She was exactly what a loose woman is supposed to be. Get out! No, Get oh, out. Sorry. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I, mean, I know people were shouting, put them away, but I was like, get them out. <laughs> I'm so in love with you, Denise. Oh, God, not funny. Oh, I don't want you on me. I was very aware of not getting too drunk when I was in there because, you know, we can all become a little bit reckless. Does Denise have any regrets? I think she probably has a regret about everything, getting out of bed in the morning. What better way to end the evening than um, to see a 53-year-old get her tits out for the lads? <laughs> Next up is Geordie Shaw's Charlotte Crosby and the curious incident of the wet bed in the night time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte Crosby, you're nasty. You're a big, grown-up girl. <laughs> <laughs> that's She was a bit too vulgar for me, and that's saying something. Come on, let's Geordie get you back Shaw, in there. Right, you ready? Can you listen? <laughs> <Oi>. Fantastic. <laughs> Charlotte from Geordie Shaw wetting the bed. I've weighed myself in the bed. Oh my God. Oh, it's a disaster. I'm having a disaster. I mean, God, is there any need to piss the bed? <sighs> oh my God. This girl's drunk every single time I see her, so much so that she is casual about pissing herself amongst celebrity strangers. You've been drunk, Vicky's been drunk, it was my turn! Ha ha ha! Oh, he's as well. Proving it's not just the ladies who know how to have a good time, it's X Factor bad boy, Frankie Cocosa. Oi, oi! Frankie really lived up to his party boy reputation whilst he was in the house, didn't he? If you were single, no. would you smash the living shit out of me right now? They're all sort of drunk in the hot tub. Someone dared Frankie to just run across the garden naked. Fucking not. Not now! <laughs> No hesitation, he's whipped off his shorts under the hot tub, he's jumped up to run in the swimming pool, and he looks so good doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Legs are Kimbo, and he's there, he's there covered in the ice with his penis flapping around. I personally don't believe that getting drunk causes you to become naked. I just think that all those people are getting drunk and naked, that's just who they were from the offset. It's boredom. The boredom takes over, the alcohol goes down the neck, and then the clothes come off. And finally, at number one, it's Vern Troyer. Thanks for the mini memories, mini me. Mini me? Now nah, then, brilliant. Vern Troyer drunk was classic Celebrity Big Brother. He's wheeling all around. I don't think he should be able to drive. I think that was everyone's concern, is can he drink and drive? Does that count? It goes really fast. Burn Big Brother wants you. Who gives a shit? For a little fella, he had a lot of confidence with the ladies. He was chatting up everyone. You're one of the most beautiful girls that I've met. Oh, thank you. That is so sweet. Oh, everybody calls me cute. Hey. <laughs> The lesson to learn about Vern Troyer is don't give him too much to drink, although he did provide one of Celebrity Big Brother's most comical moments ever. See that door? Don't do it. No, we can't, we can't watch, that's why. Stay here. It was like watching a late-night version of The Borrowers. <laughs> Hello, Vern. Hey. Did you just drive into the diary room door? Is that OK? It was priceless. For that, Vern, we thank you. Join us after the break when we'll be remembering the classic celebrity fights and feuds. Excuse me? You fucking excuse me! All right, let's what? get security in here. Let's get security in here. Fucking bully people. <laughs> Welcome back to Celebrity Big Brother, the best, the worst, and the unforgettable. 
In our next category, it's time to draw battle lines and square up to the six most sensational fights and feuds in Celebrity Big Brother history. And at number six, it's dance diva Lionel Blair versus apprentice sex pot Louisa Zisman. As part of a task, Lionel and Louisa were confined to Big Brother's most annoying room in the world, where they broke the rules and took luxury goods that they weren't allowed to have. Champagne liner! At this point, they were unaware that their naughty actions would lead to bigger consequences for the rest of the house. Sometimes you've got to be a little well, bit... Well, has got to do. Naughty. But the champers wasn't enough for our Lionel. He wanted more. <laughs> when we did that, I didn't realise that the whole house was going to be affected. And the next day, their disobedient behaviour led to the whole house being punished. Last night, Louisa stole some champagne and chocolates from the most annoying room in the world. Therefore, housemates will have no hot water or electrical appliances until further notice. <gasps> like, Lionel was bitching at us. He went to me last night, get the chocolates, get the chocolates. Chocolates, please. <laughs> I didn't even eat those fucking chocolates. She was right and I was right. I didn't even eat the chocolates. You told me to get the chocolates. Yes. I just went to get the champagne. So don't so, act all innocent and bitch about I'm us. I'm not being all innocent and bitch. You're you being... Are. You You're are being... No, us. you are being you loud, loud and bussy. Lionel Blair looking like an angry scarecrow in his hat and scarf. You, everyone will see it back. You said to me, get the chocolates, get the chocolates. So? I got the chocolates. Why didn't and you? And who ate Why the didn't fucking you? chocolates? Why didn't you say I mustn't do it? You asked me to get them, I got oh, them. Oh, am I your boss now? Did I eat the am chocolates? Am I your boss? Am I your boss? Am I your boss? Who ate the do fucking I have chocolates, to... I Lionel? did. Am I your Thank boss? You. Am so I you your are... boss? So we're not just all selfish. You are just a selfish of bitch. Lionel, Lionel, come on, calm down, calm down. I didn't even eat, I didn't even want the chocolate. I don't eat chocolate. She was wrong and I was wrong. Selfish bitches. <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> At number five, everything is far from all right as entertainment titan Michael Barrymore takes on political firebrand George Galloway. The row between Michael Barrymore and George Galloway is one of the classic celeb Big Brother rows because it was almost like watching a boxing match. It takes a brave man to argue with George Galloway. George, I feel no, really no. sorry for oh, you. Were going you're to that do... sad. Yeah. The no wonder yeah. Blair threw you out, well, George. No wonder, no wonder you're wonder. talking. Keep no on wonder talking. Blair threw you Keep out. on talking. Go on. It's difficult to sympathise with George Galloway on any issue whatsoever, but when he called Michael Barrymore self-obsessed, the man was spot on. Nobody gets one sentence into an anecdote with you before you take it over and turn it into an anecdote about you. During the, the argument, I think George threw a bit of a low punch when he quoted one of the prayers from Alcoholics Anonymous, which is, poor me, poor me, pour me a drink. I in the poor me, world. poor me, pour me a drink. No, is that what I, you said? Oh, don't no, fucking I bring you that, that yeah. into it. Poor that me, is low. Poor me, pour no. me a drink. You're fucking low. You are out of order. Yeah. You, you are, are out of order. Me, you poor are me. out of order. Poor me, you poor me. You are fucking wanker. Michael Barrymore deserved, really, what he got. George, a bit of a low one there, boy. At number four, Plastic Fantastic, US reality star Frenchie goes up against sitcom legend Leslie Jordan. The Frenchie and Leslie arguments, I mean, you just, honestly, you had to be there. I love Leslie Jordan. I thought he was fantastic. He was adorable. You wanted to take him home and put on your metal piece. He'd be perfect. I hated Frenchie. I really hated her. And before she went in, she said, I only like men with big. And you go, oh. Any chance of these two getting on went out of the window when Leslie was rudely awoken by Frenchie. Loud, 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 loud. She was obnoxious. I didn't like her at all. Get the fuck oh, out of here. Stop, stop, stop. Then Frenchie decided to throw all our food on the floor, bearing in mind we were on rations anyway for two weeks, so we didn't really have much to eat, and it was all on the floor. Lovely. You're a sick bitch, I saw. I didn't do anything. I saw. I was in the bathroom. You're a sick, sick bitch. I, I was in the bathroom doing my makeup. Frenchie, I have I no was idea what friend. you're talking about. I saw you. I have no idea what you're talking about. I was in the bathroom doing my makeup. Charlene. It was TV gold. You fucking little bitch! Hey, hey, hey guys, we can't take this. She is destroying all of our food. 
I didn't do nothing with the food. I, I saw it. you! I you was in the bathroom. French slut! And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Frenchie targeted Leslie's most prized possession, his beloved boxer shorts. Piece of shit. Hey. What is that? They're my, um, $100. Josh A. Banks underwear that she took scissors to. <gasps> you did that? Oh, yeah. That's what? Well, it? she's fun. Now, the great question I want to ask here is where on earth did Frenchie get hold of the scissors? Big Brother has spoken to Frenchie spoken. about her behaviour. She's got to go. That's spoken. My life is in danger here. At number three, the Earl of Essex takes on America's deadliest double act. It's Rylan versus Spidey. The row between Spidey and Rylan and Razor Ruddock was just a classic example of how Americans don't get the British people. The housemates had thought Spidey had walked out of the Big Brother house and left the series early, but unbeknownst to them, it was a secret twist and they'd actually gone to the basement to watch their housemates every move for two days. It was revealed that Heidi and Spencer were still in the house, so we were all a bit like... Oh. And as much as it shocked us, I sort of knew that they must have still been there. When we return to your amazing Big Brother mansion, I can guarantee fireworks. I wasn't happy with what they said. They said that I was playing up to the cameras, which wound me right up, to say the least. And. I weren't having it. Big Brother wants to know who you think are the two least exciting housemates to watch. I choose Rylan because no one's even got to see the true Rylan because all he does is play his Big Brother character in here. And you know what? I was Look hoping. Look at all the cameras. Yeah, and just stare at cameras and walk around his booty shorts. So. I had nothing to lose and I weren't going to let anyone talk to me like that or push my buttons. And when Spidey did return to the Big Brother house, Ryland did not hold Almost back. Do you think I'm playing up to the cameras? We've been watching all you of genuinely, you in every room. No, 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 no. You genuinely feel I am playing up to the cameras? 100%. Then you need to get fucking glasses, mate, because we, we neither watched of you. us have... We I am not you. playing up to one fucking camera. And so I started having a row and things escalated and escalated a bit more. You're oh, fake. Uh, no, you're no, fake. No, you know no. it. I'll be fucking you, honest you were, with oh, you. you I misjudged you. I misjudged you. All that BS. Who else who in this house has not said it? You were one of the people. Who else in this house has not said it? What we said. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Your hold on, hold on. I'm in touch. No, let me speak, please, because I started fucking we've speaking. We've heard you speak you for start. hours. Well, we're so sick of hearing you. You are the best time in there. You are I have said. We've heard. Well, then why the fuck am I playing up to the cameras? You want me to play up to the cameras? You can't be a normal person. This is an act. A normal fucking person. I am. I'm a normal person, nope. mate. I live in the fucking oh, real right. world out there. Don't know Whatever, where the fuck Rylan. you live. Whatever, Rylan. They thought they picked their fight well with me, but then they met Razor. Because you don't mean anything You to should me. mind your Bro, business you gone, with your wife oh, oh, and what you guys do. Don't get nasty. Don't get nasty. Let's not get nasty. Because I could be the ugliest in the world. I'll show you, you or something like that. You showed how stupid Americans can be sometimes, because you do not pick a fight with Neil Ruddock. He's not nicknamed Razor for no reason. Excuse me? You fucking excuse me! All right, let's what? get security in here. Let's get security in here. Fucking bully people. Can we get security in here? Let's get security in here. You. We get security in here. I bullied him, Razor? How was that bully? He just did the same thing to me. Fucking bully, you bullying her? Yeah, don't say Who do that? Who the what? It's exactly what we were talking about. I think that's the point then Spencer realised. Don't mess with us Brits. No feud ran deeper than our next toxic twosome, Jim Davidson and Linda Nolan. Jim and Linda did not like each other. She hated him from the word go and had an argument before they'd even been in the house. Linda and I had never been friends. Um, she kept on about how we'd met and how awful I was when I was drunk. Well, dear Kettle regards pot. I think Big Brother are very clever in uh, capturing old feuds that go back a long, long way. For instance, the story of Linda's husband in the Frank Castle's dressing room. I think, you know, Jim Davison was a little out of order, but I think he was frustrated. That's why he did it. Ask her about Frank Carson's dressing room. Their colossal argument related to a decades-old incident of theft involving Linda's deceased husband, which took place in Frank Carson's dressing room. Hello, Mr Big Time. What about Frank Carson's dressing room? What about Frank Carson's dressing room? 
what you asked Lee, uh, Louisa to ask me about. I think my favourite thing Jim Davidson did in the house was the Frank Carson's dressing room thing and the way that he got Louisa to stir the pot and then tried to deny that that's what he was doing in the first place. I didn't ask you anything about Frank Carson's dressing room. I about Frank Carson's dressing room. You tell me about Frank Carson's dressing room. Low blow, Jim. Low blow. Fucking lie. You have no bottle. You put yourself up as this big guy that everybody loves. No, 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 I don't put myself up as anything. An utter okay. top spot. I think Linda didn't like me, and I think me being rude to her late husband was just one of her sticks to hit me with. Let's talk in the morning. I don't need to talk to you, ever. Fine. Good night. OK? But if you want to talk about Frank Carson's dressing room behind my back, you speak to me I about don't understand it. what you mean. A big, tall, you, what, grown what up What is Frank man Carson's dressing room? The little snidey shit that you are. She had this beer in a bonnet about me. She carried this hatred around. Jim, fuck off. Do me a favour and fuck off. I don't want to talk to you. OK. OK, well then, do me a favour and fuck off. OK, fine. But it wasn't just Frank Carson's dressing room that came between Linda and Jim. So you had Jim trying to be nice, trying to be understanding, trying to be compassionate, and Linda finding fault, taking issue with him, getting annoyed, blowing a gasket all over the place. Well, you're not going to speak to me now because you know I'm right. Don't try and mix it up and then backtrack, because you're a coward. I think Linda done Jim loads of favours because Jim tried so many different times to offer an olive branch to Linda, but she just kept going on and 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 on about it. It's like, oh, get over it. There's a smaller knife here, Linda. You want to get to some bit? Jim, will you stop being nice to me, please? OK. Good. Shove the knife up your arse. How's that? There you go. When I think of Linda, I tend to think, you know, thanks for the votes, Linda. Well, why would you say that if you're not shit-stirring? Just to piss you off, my little darling. Well, there you go. You've, it's worked. The last thing I heard Jim say about me was, oh, Linda Nolan, if I'm ever in a room with her again, would somebody please shoot me? Well, Jim, if you bring the gun, I'll pull the trigger. Finally, a feud which led to some of the most controversial scenes in British television history, when Jade Goody met Shilpa Shetty. Jade Goody and Shilpa Shetty, I mean, where do you even start? riveting telly to see things being said that you knew you jarred you when you were listening to them. You know, this is awful. There had been tension building between Big Brother's Jade Goody and Bollywood star Shilpa Shetty for several days. And it was all sparked off by an OXO cube. Guys, have you all used up the chicken stock cubes? There's one left, yeah. There's one left. You all put the whole thing? No, there's one left. Watching that row on TV was one of the most horrible, uncomfortable experiences you could have. Well, this is the only thing that I ordered the last time, because... That's the I only thing. Have... Like, yeah. On the last shopping list, you didn't order anything I, I else ordered this. but them. I ordered this. That was it. Ordered the you didn't order chicken, I you didn't ordered... order bread, no, you didn't no, order seasoning. It. Seasoning? No, no, no. no. What it turned into was a much darker and deeper wow that ignited all sorts of underlying feelings about not just race, but also class. You might Don't be some princess in fucking Neverland. Neverland. You're not no fucking princess here. You're a normal housemate like everybody else. Everybody else. And you need to come to terms with that. And don't lie. Don't lie about things. Why come and say, the only thing I ordered was Oxo cubes? Why lie? Why lie? Learn some manners. You know what? Manners. Yes, learn some manners. I don't want manners to you. I don't want manners to you. I don't want manners to you. Do you know what? You need to be a real life in your life. That's what you need. Because you're so stuck up your own ass. You can't see anything else other than your own fucking nose. I'm stuck up? Yeah, you are. You're so far up your ass. You can smell your own shit. Your claim to fame is this. Good for you. My claim to fame is meeting you, you fucking loser. There was this very upper-class Indian woman who they felt was lording it over them. We see questions raised all over the press about the nature of reality television. I don't know how much you know about why the <laughs> nobody's here or no. anything like that. You must be probably one of the only people in England or indeed around the planet that has got no idea of the impact that Celebrity Big Brother um, has had. Just take a quick look at this. This isn't just about a TV show anymore, it's a major diplomatic row. I think the Indians want reassured that we are a nation uh, of uh, fairness and we're a nation of tolerance. Now, you'd have got pretty good odds a week ago against the chances of the Chancellor of the Exchequer using a visit to India to talk about celebrity Big Brother. 
Good afternoon. The celebrity Big Brother racism row exploded into the political and diplomatic arena today. Concerned that the Bollywood actress is the subject of racist bullying, today reached Prime Minister's question time. You've got the British Prime Minister caught up in some great political row. It's incredible. The story got bigger and bigger and in the end was being talked about everywhere on the globe and in the House of Commons. We all learnt uh, and reinforced what you can and cannot say, what mental attitudes you have, how you treat all human beings. And Jay Goody, she was a much, much better person after that row and devastating argument with Shopa. Still to come, the cringiest task moments in the history of Celebrity Big Brother. Now, would you like me to be the cat? Welcome back. Now, one thing you cannot get away from in the Big Brother house are ridiculous, brilliant, laugh out loud tasks. So in our next category, we celebrate some of the most toe curling task moments ever in CBB history. The thing about the tasks on Big Brother is that obviously they're there to make the celebs look stupid and to give us a bit of entertainment. Can you explain to Big Brother why you do not want to wear the suit? Because I have dignity and because it's not for sale. Oh! Tasks definitely put housemates' egos to the test. Oh! You're not going to have a nice journey in there. They want to make it as, as difficult as possible for you. Oh! Oh! The task terrified me. You didn't really trust Big Brother. <laughs> You're constantly overanalyzing everything. But I loved it. It was fun. <laughs> so just tell me now, is it going to be viewed on TV? If it's going to be viewed on TV, I'm getting out of the house right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you go in there for. Go fuck yourself. So let's look at five of our cringiest task moments, kicking off with a fruity Julie Goodyear. Julie Goodyear? I've forgotten. Oh, my God. One of CBB's most legendary tasks was Gods and Mortals, which saw Corrie icon Julie Goodyear transformed into Aphrodite, goddess of love. And it's fair to say she played the role magnificently. She wants to be fed. She's being fed. Oh, yeah. my God. Hmm. Julie Goodyear wanted to perform a sex act on a banana in the Celebrity Big Brother house. You're quite there. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> what happened? Look, look at the banana for Ju that Julie's oh ordered. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an innocent piece of fruit. What did she have against a lovely, fresh banana? I don't think it's the first time she's done that with a banana. She lapped it up. <laughs> <laughs> Julie Goodyear fillets a banana. <gasps> uh, 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 why not? Your nan sucked a dick. Your mum sucked a dick. You're not the only one in the world who gets to suck a dick because you're young and beautiful. Julie Goodyear, you fillet that banana. You go all night. Let's watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I feel like I've died and gone to heaven. At four is a true celebrity Big Brother legend putting in his first ridiculous task appearance. The cat's not out of the bag just yet, so in the meantime, take a look at George Galloway and Pete Burns trying their hand at interpretive dance. George Galloway, supposedly a serious politician. Then Celebrity Big Brother comes along, offers him some money, and he grabs and takes it. <laughs> George Galloway doing the robot with his willy very much there in a leotard. Listen, I'm only 52. I'm too young for that kind of spectacle. I am still recovering. <laughs> It's a terrifying moment when you think Dennis Rodman is the most normal person in the room. <laughs> 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 
Did he think he was going to get more voters? I think ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now brace yourself for something even more bizarre. It's a duet starring Ulrika Johnson and Vern Troyer. Ulrika Johnson used to be a weather girl. Nobody ever said she could sing, but nobody seemed to have told her that. So when it came to her in a duet with Vern Troyer singing Endless Love, I think Endless was really an appropriate way to describe it. Oh, shit. My love. There's only you in my life. The only thing that's bright. Woo! My first love. <laughs> Your every breath that I take. It was a beautiful song, I, and I know why Latoya Jackson was moved. He just, in the little wig, looks like, you know, Michael Jackson as a baby. Nothing can explain away this terrible singing voice. And your eyes, eyes, your eyes, they tell me how much you care. Oh, you will always be my endless love. Although they were badly out of tune, there was some magical quality in these two. Eureka Johnson had finally found endless love with a man who was 80 centimetres. At number two is the truly jaw-dropping U18 task from 2014. Be warned, the following footage contains a pensioner in leather. We were split into two groups. I had to go with Linda and Casey and become the children's version of Big Brother. What's Mr Monkey got? <gasps> He's got a custard pie, children! Are you going to put that in a housemate's face? Oh, I think he is. Oh. Oh. I love Mr Monkey. When Lionel and the others went in and did this sadomasochistic orgy. Oh, my <laughs> God! When you go into a programme like Big Brother, you can't say, well, I didn't expect that. I expected anything. Well, it was funny. They just said, we're putting you into this S&M room. And we had this outfit that I had to put on. It was something like the Vauxhall Tavern. They said, be as rude and as filthy as you want. And I was. Oh, God, that's so good! <laughs> the Lionel Blair s and stunt was just wrong. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, I thought, why pick me? Cos <laughs> I was the oldest person in the house. I actually thought Lionel was very good in that. He was only playing a part, even though people were sitting at home doing this. I liked it. Lee Ryan, God love him, I mean, he was made for it. And Louisa, well, that's just everyday life for her. Go on, Louisa. Fucking grandpa, get down. I knew I was being naughty, and I knew it was... But I knew that was part of the show, part of the game, part of what the public wanted to see. Oh, what's just been seen cannot be unseen. Yes, Louisa. Honestly, I don't know what to say. I watched it and my chin was seriously on my chest when I saw that little clip. But I loved it. It was fun and it was like a release. It's like when you really want to swear, you could. <laughs> Suck my dick. <laughs> He's so bad. I know Lionel Blair very well and actually I like him tremendously. He's a very, very polite, nice guy in real life. I practically fell off the sofa when he said, Suck my dick. He's a rock sucking cock. He's like, oh my god, are you having a giraffe? Seeing Lionel Blair do that, it was we like watching the Duke of Edinburgh twerk. It's not to be done. Nice clean Lionel Blair saying bad swear words. <laughs> Suck my dick. <laughs> So at number one, we revisit the right honourable George Galloway MP, whose animal improvisation task with Rula Lenska gave us one of the most talked about moments in UK television history. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, would you like me to be the cat? Yes, please. 
He's a very astute politician, and I don't think George does anything that uh, he hasn't thought through. He would tell you he did it to make a broader political point. Others would say he did it to make an absolute ass of himself for pretending to be a cat. Oh, no. Don't be frightened. Come on, go ahead, Kit Kat. When George was given the task of animal role-play, nobody ever imagined he would take it quite so seriously. There was something toe-curlingly revolting about it. It was so disgusting, children had to leave the room screaming. People had to go into therapy for years to get over the vista of George Galloway and Rula Lenska. Yuck! Yes, good pussycat, yes. Good pussycat. He said he was trying to get it across to a, a whole uh, type of people, a whole age that never really engages in politics. Really? Really, George, do you think that's what you achieved? I mean, the man is a politician. That's crummy. Delicious. Good girl. Good girl. Now look, your lips still got cream all over your whiskers. Shit making, I went, oh, he's got to go. And to think George Galloway is still in politics. Meow. After the break, we'll be celebrating those historic Americans. I feel she's emotionally disturbed. Very, very. And love to hate celebrity supervillains. We do hate living with these people. You know, they're awful to live with. Welcome back to Celebrity Big Brother: the best, the worst, and the unforgettable. Now it's time to look back at some of the US superstars that have graced Britain's most famous house. No series would be complete without these American A-listers. I love Americans on the show, whoever they are, whatever they do. They think that they are above everything that we can produce. I think they just raise the level of mental. They give us a glimpse into the sort of madness of Hollywood. The interesting thing about the American stars is that they're kind of 20 years ahead of the British stars. They come over and they know exactly what's going on. They know how to get the attention and they know when to step back. Our banter is not how the Americans banter at all, you know. We casually tell our mates to F off. And you say that to an American, like, why did you call me? These Americans come in thinking, Ah, oh, you know, I'm going to do this, and it all sounds great. And the next thing you know, they're in the Big Brother diary room going, it says in my contract, and it's like, get over it. Whatever your agents told you is full of bullshit. You're in the house. Get over it. At number three, it's Hollywood hardman Michael Madsen. Madsen entered the house with a Tarantino tough guy reputation. Michael Madsen was unbelievable. I actually, I couldn't speak to him for the first that couple of hours. And he's like the pinnacle of a man. He don't talk, he just growls. He's so like, hey, what do you want to do? I feel like I'm on an episode of Star Trek. However, the tough guy exterior began to crack as he bonded with his housemates. You know that shit? <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom. Michael also showed his gentler side when he was massaged by Pineapple Dance Studios' Andrew Stone. Oh, my God. Relax. What do you like, a masseuse? I know my shit, boy. Is it too late to cancel my nomination? <laughs> but it was his fiery relationship with Denise Welsh that defined Michael's time in the house. See, the funny thing about Denise and Michael is that they were a sort of similar age, they seemed to be getting on really, really well at first, and then I don't know where it really went wrong. I think it was basically a lot of sexual tension just being built up, in, in, at first, anyway. I love the banter that you and I have, and I know that you want to marry me, and I know that you want to have children with me, and that's what they're just not getting. But the thing is, because it's Denise, she has sexual tension with everyone. She has it with me. Uh, that's a little uh, less. Mm. You're a drunken bitch. You're a drunken fucking dickhead, is that whatever? <laughs> You're an abomination. Yeah, you are. I reckon if they got down and done the dirty, they would have been 
best of housemates, but there was sexual tension. Do you want to know what I'm asking them? Would yeah. it really be important to you? You think I'm in don't, like yeah, chatting Yeah, but don't say it like an aggressive way as if I'm like, trying well, to accuse you, you, well, you of got, sneaking. You got aggressive with me about it. So Fuck what? you, so, so watch Fuck this. You. Fuck off. The thing is with Denise, though, she was always nagging at Michael. She was just building up and up and up and up, and you knew he was just going to snap. I wouldn't want to be in your mind. Oh, just... OK, I mean, then stay the fuck out of mine, OK? Cos I've had enough of it. She's bugging the <laughs> of me, I swear to God. <laughs> Who wants to spend two or three weeks in a house with Denise Welch? Well, Michael Madsen certainly didn't at the end of it. She's an absolute harridan. All right, Denise, fine, Denise, just keep it up. You see? And I will simply you walk see? away from you. And it all came to a head when Michael nominated Denise face to face. I can't stand another minute in this house with Denise. I'm not the source of the argument, because she is. I feel she's emotionally disturbed. Brilliant, um, thanks, Michael. <clears throat> Michael, absolutely correct. What you said about Denise, I salute you. At number two, it's only the Oscar-nominated Gary Busey. The minute Gary Busey came out and looked confused, I thought, somebody turn him around and send him home. What are you like to live with? What? What do you like to live with? What do I like to live with? What are you like to live with? Oh, what am I like to live with? Yeah. Brilliant. It's brilliant TV. Well, you have three questions for me. I've already been briefed. <laughs> I think the confusion arose because Gary had been told that Emma was going to ask him three questions, and he got that in his head, and that was it. Don't you have three questions for me? <laughs> Gary and I may have had a slightly awkward meeting, but after entering the house, things got even worse. Ejel is my name. Ejel? Ejel. Ejel. Orgy? Fucking Orgy. Hi. Stephanie. I think you know my brother, Spencer Pratt. What? I think you know my brother. I think you're friends with my brother, Spencer. No. No? Trust me, it might be funny from the outside watching in. You do not want to live with that man. One thing Gary often faced was a problem with his knee, but it was much worse for the other celebrity housemates. I have a lot of sympathy with Gary because when my knee pops, I always drop my trousers. Can someone sort that out now? That is not right. That's not natural. That's do? not right. Well, what can you do? Do you want to see my cock and balls? Here, have a look at that. Are you okay, Gary? No, my knee was out. Maybe you should go in the toilet and do that next time. It's over. He was a nightmare to live with. You keep saying to the camera how you're becoming a better person and thank you so much. And That's right. You're changing. That's true. Shut up, Gary! You are my worst nightmare and I feel like I'm in hell. <laughs> and it wasn't just Stephanie who'd had enough. Can you stop? In I'll tell you what. Stop interrupting me, yeah? Now, have a seat. Stop interrupting have a seat. me, yeah? I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Stop interrupting me, yeah? You're so rude sometimes. Well, I apologise. At the end of the day, it's a TV show, it's an entertainment show, the public voted for him and he won. Oh, yes, Gary became the first ever American Celebrity Big Brother winner. Big Brother salutes you. Yes, sir, sir. Yes, ma'am, ma'am. And in the top spot, it's the mother-in-law from hell, Jackie Stallone. Yeah, Jackie! The best ever American on Celebrity Big Brother has to be Jackie Stallone. Jackie Stallone was a sensational Celebrity Big Brother booking, particularly because she walked into the house and utterly unnerved her ex-daughter-in-law, Brigitte Nielsen. Hey. Oh, my God, Jackie! Yeah, Bracky. <gasps> oh, oh, my, my God. God! How are you? Uh -huh. oh, this is Sylvester's mom. Yes. God, I can't uh, believe yes. it. Oh, it was horrifically wonderful. The last person you want to meet in the Celebrity Big Brother house is your celebrity mother-in-law. Don't ever forget all of you. She's Jackie Stallone, and everything's possible. It wasn't just Bridget who was shocked by Jackie's entrance. What the hell have you done to us? Yeah, exactly. You really put the cat amongst the pigeons there, Big Brother. And who can forget Jackie's turbulent relationship with John McCrick? Well, let me oh, ask you, is there any toast being served? <laughs> if you want toast, love, there's a toaster over there and there's bread there. You make your own toast. It's there. She wouldn't do a single thing for herself. Wouldn't make a cup of tea, wouldn't go near the kitchen. <laughs> You're the in-law from hell, so shut up. Look at this dumb bastard. Who the fuck is he? I was sympathetic to Jackie when she came in, but she was absolutely horrendous. 
Did you think I'm here to make you feel better no, about yourself? No, but you know, at least do something. We can't be so well, pathetic all you, your life, love, for God's I'll sake. I'll start after you. Whatever you do, yeah. I'll copy. Now, what are you going to do? Sit in the chair, I'll join you. The big problem for Jackie Stallone was the environment she was landed in. She didn't know who that we all were. She regarded us as terrible lowlife. They said that I would be with eight of the most brilliant people in England. I was hoping you'd have someone like Bill Gates here. They talk about, uh, frankly, nothing. People say I'm difficult to live with, but nothing could compare with Jackie Stallone. Of all women on the planet, who would you least like to be landed with as a partner or a housemate? Jackie Stallone. Oh. Well, you can all fuck yourselves now. Now time for our next category. Over the years, Celebrity Big Brother has had countless heroes, but what would the good guys be without the bad guys? So let's meet our terrible trio, our top three Big Brother villains. At number three is the Brad Pitt of the ballroom, bitchy James Jordan. I hated James with a passion, and how people put up with him, I have no idea. James Jordan was fantastic on Celebrity Big Brother. He was confrontational, he was pugnacious, he took on Audley Harrison, he was up for a fight with everybody. He was incredibly vocal. If anyone provoked him, he went there, and it was fantastic viewing. In the dance world, I'm up to Brad Pitt. I'm, I'm on the top, mate. And it's very difficult when you're a male dancer to be Mr. Macho, and I think James, he was trying to get rid of that dancer image. I am a wind-up. I, I like to wind people up. James managed to antagonise boxer Audley Harrison by repeatedly calling him Audrey. I'm serious now, because I'm not dealing with kids, I'm dealing with adults. And I've told you, if you take the piss out of me, you're going to see a response. Don't shout at me, mate. I am shouting at you. Well, I'll do what I want, mate. I love the guy, but he shouldn't have taken on Audley Harrison. What was he thinking of? Well, do it again and see what happens. What are you going to do? Well, do it and see. Oh, well, my what? Calls in on. Well, my do it and see, then. Mate. I'm not scared of you, mate. You're I wasn't okay. concerned about him knocking me out. He hasn't knocked anyone out for about a decade. Kelly Maloney was the next housemate to clash with James. Why are you in such a bad mood, Kelly? You all right? Got a bed the wrong size? I'm not an evil person, but, um... Yeah, I'm just very truthful. Just don't like your company, James. Oh, that's all right. Don't like the way you speak about people, don't like the way you talk behind people's back. I don't talk behind you anyone's do. back, darling. There was the ventriloquist dummy task. Kelly, why every time someone nominates you, do you go up to Big Brother and say, you want to leave, I'm going to walk from the show. If you want to walk, just fucking walk. Then it was time for a rematch with Audley under the dome. For all those people that didn't know who Audley was, you'll probably remember him better from the position he's in now, <laughs> on his back. <laughs> How Audley put up with him and didn't knock him spark out, well, there you go. You're embarrassing, James. OK, you're boring. OK, but you're embarrassing. You're embarrassing to no, your you're, profession, you're, 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 you're embarrassing. I think James suffers from NBPE. Not been punched enough. I reckon I should go in with the, in the ring with you, mate, because no. I fancy my chances no. too. I'll fight him when I get out. Yeah. I can be one of his fights. You know, I'll okay. get in the ring with him. You don't need to arrange it. We can no, do it in no, private. No, I'll get in the ring with you. Because there's no money in it, because nobody's going to pay to see you get in No one's going to pay to see you either, mate, because you're nobody's washed up. Even after all that, he actually made it to the final. James! Sadly for James, though, that didn't stop the booze. But that's what you get when you're a celebrity Big Brother villain. In second spot, it's the former Queen of the Rovers return, Julie Goodyear. Julie walked into the house as a national treasure. You've either got it or you haven't. Get it, got it, good. At first, she was a firm favourite with viewers and with her fellow housemates. Oh, that is not good. Oh, it's like a, a mouldy cock, in it? <laughs> No, that is love. I've always had much more in common with gay men. Who are you calling gay? Don't tell me you're not gay. Of course I'm gay. Thank fuck. I can't imagine it without you. I love you so much. No. She's been so lovely. She's been great and funny. I think she's genuinely a nice lady. But then nice turned to nasty as we saw Julie's other side. Julie Goodyear, or Julie Good for Nothing, as I like to call her. Another day. First week, she was... Everybody loved her and, you know, couldn't see 
what, anything that was wrong or whatever. And then I think she she dug her own grave and became a villain. Fuck you, oh, there. <laughs> she was very nasty to Colleen, who is adorable. Colleen, oh, if I Jesus. could give you one piece of advice, it would be shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think it was just part of a task. I think it was a little bit personal. If I could change one thing about Julie, it would be to be more honest than I think you're being. Ooh. Ooh. I think Julie found Colleen her biggest threat in the house, and I think that showed when uh, they did the task where Julie was in the stocks or something, and Colleen went up and had to put a custard pie on her face. Julie made a great big song and dance about a pie in the face. Actually, Colleen was very, very gentle with it. Should have felt the impact of that pie in my fucking face. Everyone knew they weren't getting on, do you know what I mean? But I was quite shocked when Colleen broke down because of what Julie said. You know I love you. Piss off, Julie. You haven't loved me from day one. Excuse my language, she's so fucking defaced. Then, of course, I was, you know, really, really unhappy with Miss Good for Nothing. In the end, the viewers fell out of love with Julie and she got her marching orders. Julie. And in the top spot, the most dastardly duo ever to enter the Celebrity Big Brother house. It's super villains, Spidey. We didn't fly from America to be your extras, okay? Yeah, we flew from America to win. It's definitely like Team Spidey versus Team House. house. <laughs> I think they were thrown in there to be the kind of objectionable Americans that we all like to hate, and fair play to them, they did a great job. No one cares if you go. Nope. No one cares if you go. Spidey were absolutely brilliant because they didn't come over to be liked. They came over to give a show, to entertain, and they did. After supposedly leaving the house, Spidey was sent to the Big Brother basement to spy on and control their housemates, which gave them the perfect opportunity to show off their villainous side. Hello, Big Brother. Will you please turn the alarm on? I don't think they realise that they have a big day ahead of them. Yeah! Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> He's acting like it's 700 pounds. I live that way. They were nice at one moment, they were nasty in the next, conspiratorial, manipulative. That was Spidey. Spidey were then duped by Big Brother into revealing their true feelings about their other housemates in a fake web interview. Um, we 100% want to win the Celebrity Big Brother, and we always did, but we do hate living with these people, you know, they're awful to live with, you know, they don't like us, and it's so obvious, and they don't want us in the house, so it's a struggle every day. I want to get an alert when they're coming to America, yeah. so we know, just to be extra. Oh, you ain't welcome in Essex, you prick. But even when Spidey realised the other housemates had been watching, they showed absolutely no remorse. If right now they said, can I evict every one of you and only Heidi and Spencer live in this house? I would say, great. I don't want to live with strangers for three weeks. That's part of the show. Oh, not what? But like You're all so master manipulators, now, Spidey him. knew when to turn you on know, the tears. I think the most amazing thing about that series of Celebrity Big Brother was the, the, the final dinner when Spidey were doing that speech. I truly do have such a place for all of you in my heart, and I really do. I'm appreciative of this experience, and, uh, of my husband more than anything, which is just like my heart and my soul, my everything, and I just truly love you more than just like my essence. That speech. <sighs> it's been very difficult for me to be awful, but you know, he's gotta be a bad guy. <laughs> How can you believe anything that come out of his mouth? Well done, Spencer. Well done, Heidi. Good speech. Wow. Here's to all of us. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, it didn't work. Stay tuned, because next we're going to be turning up the heat and revisiting the most heartwarming love stories in Celebrity Big Brother history. Do you realise that we have fucking feelings? What did I say? You Tell me what I said. Tell people. me what I said.
Welcome back to Celebrity Big Brother. The best, the worst and the unforgettable. Now, for all you Big Brother romantics out there, this is just for you. It's time for some celebrity stories of love and lust. Here's our favourite three. Kicking us off, it's a love triangle featuring Danica, Mike the Situation Sorrentino and Prince Lorenzo. It's Danica! Danica. Uh. <laughs> the situation really fell for Danica and, you know, like everyone else, we I, I thought that Danica really liked him as well. Come on, give us a hug. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you were going to do that. What is your dream? To meet, like, the man of my dreams. Can you hug me properly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is that it is? No, it's a nice hug. And I may have already met him. I think you're special, you know what I mean? But then I think she realised that she might get more out of a flirt with Prince Lorenzo. Out of all the housemates, you are one of the people that I just love speaking to. I could talk to you all night and not get bored. I need a hug. Mm, in the rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would definitely, like, kiss you and stuff here. <laughs> no, really. I can give you, like, a little nice kiss. I'm not kissing you on the lips. I don't think she's interested in either of them, but maybe Prince Lorenzo, because he might be able to get her a few more pairs of shoes. <laughs> I simply don't understand these love triangles like this Danica one. I have enough trouble keeping my wife, the booby, satisfied. Take your jealousy elsewhere, because to be honest with you, I am sick of pussyfooting around you, <sighs> right, and tiptoeing around you. And, you know, is he OK today, is he not? Well, I've done now. I couldn't give a shit. It's not my problem that you fancy me and I don't fancy you back. Whoa. I want to talk to Lorenzo. I love Lorenzo. I don't want to be with you, I want to be your friend. But if that's too difficult for you to deal with, then that is fine. I felt a bit sorry for the situation, if I'm honest, because I think Danica's that mesmerisingly beautiful that you could kind of fall in love with her. You sit there, like an immature 17 year old, going, oh, who do you like more, me or Lorenzo? Don't talk to me from now on. Oh my Let's god, go, you just made my Christmas list. These men deserve everything that happens to them, but you are a bad person, Danica. You are the worst kind of person, and that's why I really love you a lot in the Celebrity Big Brother house. Just really entertaining. Now, the Celebrity Big Brother romance that captured the nation's hearts. It's our favourite civilian housemate, Chantelle, and her ordinary boy, Preston. Chantelle was the poor man's Princess Diana. She lived the poor life. <laughs> From along comes Preston and the Gilded Palace, the pop group, the stardom. There's something about you too. Chantelle and Preston, oh, it's still like the greatest Big Brother love story. Ah. <laughs> Chantelle, if I didn't have a girlfriend, I'd marry you in a minute. Oh. Yeah. I'd marry you too. Oh, yeah. It was a bit of a situation that Preston already had someone on the outside. You know, even if there was something between us, I'd never dream of kissing him. Just for the fact that he's got a girlfriend. That's even right. if he's like, oh, I don't care about my girlfriend, I don't care, I'd be like, no. Chantelle and Preston was denying that they was liking each other, but we could all see the chemistry was there. She fancies me, but I ain't interested. Yeah, you know. It's always the way <laughs> you care, so don't fancy you at all. Oh my god! <laughs> so don't! No kisses, just hugs. Mm, I'm not cheating. No kisses, just hugs. If I was Preston's girlfriend, I'd chore the face off you when you came out of here. Oh, it's pulling my arms! Pulling his arms? I'd cut his cock off and make him swallow it. Why? Boom! Pete Burns serves it. The probability girlfriend's door now going, what do you think of Preston copping off with this blonde slapper? Oi! Who's had a knock us out every two minutes. Somehow, their romance, much as we wanted it to work, was ultimately doomed. They got married, they had the whole magazine wedding, and it ended up with them getting divorced. When it came to our favourite tale of love and lust, there was never any doubt. It's the love triangle to end all love triangles, headed up by pop Lothario, Lee Ryan. Lee Ryan in the house was unbelievably entertaining on so many levels. I used to watch Blue when I was young. I used to listen to their songs and there I am, handcuffed to old Mr Lee Ryan himself. Make sure you keep your hands to yourself, Lee. Yeah, yeah, Are you able to do that, Lee? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Famous last words, Lee. I mean, give it a couple of hours and they were all over each other. 
Oh, do you know what? I'll allow you to spoon me tonight. Oh, shit. Don't do that shit. So Lee was saying things like he really liked me and, you know, couldn't wait for things to develop on the outside. I really do like you, actually. Lee loves the idea of being in love and Lee falls in love like that. <laughs> but then, as soon as the handcuffs come off, he was all over Jasmine. I really fancy Jasmine. I think she's beautiful. Go. Good. <laughs> As soon as he sees another pair of tits, he falls in love with that at the same time. What? I just feel a bit mugged off, really. Oh, God, I didn't want to cry on TV. It's so embarrassing. Me and Lee were really close. We were handcuffed to each other. I did not expect anything to ever... feelings to develop or anything. I just, I just feel like he's reeled me in and just mugged me off and making me sound like I'm a crazy psycho. A love triangle, a really compelling story. I thought I was dating Lee Ryan at the end of this thing. I kind of get where Lee was coming from. He had Casey who was obsessed with him, but then a prettier girl liked him. It's like suddenly there's this whole thing about Oh, Jasmine and Lee, Casey and Lee. And I'm looking like some kind of fucking player, and I'm not. You haven't done anything with Jasmine, no. No, no, not at all. We're all watching you. We're, we've witnessed it. Oh, God, Lee, what are you doing? There was a lot of lust going on. There was a lot of sex in toilets. There was a lot of fumbling. There was far too much, actually, to be on television. I don't know if Lee was aware of the problems he was causing. You can't treat people like that. Treat people like what? Like what? Like he doesn't actually think he's doing anything wrong. Jasmine, you have lost your place in the Celebrity Big Brother house. You have 30 seconds to say your goodbyes. And as soon as Jasmine was evicted, he was back on Casey. Been a long I time of... since I've sat on a bed with <laughs> you, <laughs> Mr. Ryan. Let's have sex. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of stick and blame got put on Lee Ryan, but oh my God, the girls were stupid. I mean, Casey, please. It's like she's forgotten every single thing that's just happened. Have a pleasure. You're a good cuddle. I know, it's only you. <laughs> Lee Ryan, <laughs> you're very, very naughty. The greatest moment of the series was when we all had to freeze. Do you remember when people were coming out the clock? Jasmine came back into the house. They all had to be frozen, so they couldn't really react. And she told them exactly what she thought of them all. I'm back! <laughs> my gut went up to my mouth and my heart went down and I felt so sick. I have a few things to say to you, obviously. He did express that he really liked me. So you intentionally and deliberately went out to hurt me. You found it you know, prime opportunity to completely throw yourself at him. It's quite embarrassing, actually. That was so uncomfortable, you could not take your eyes off it. This big emotional nuclear bomb had exploded. I wished I just broke the rules and I got up and I went to Jasmine, you know, you can talk, you done it right in front of my face, didn't give me a second thought, and I was gonna turn to Lee and say, and you, grow a pair of balls, you've played us both. It's just so hurtful Man, to do the two I girls. Tell me what do you did I say? Do you realise that we have fucking feelings? What did I say? You Tell can't me what do I said. This to Tell me what I said. I don't think he handled the situation as well as certain people would have liked him to. Me, I think he handled it perfectly. Get in there, son. I have spoken to Lee, you know, and we've kind of put it behind us now. You know, he has got a good heart. He's like a little lost puppy. So, you know, we'll put it behind us. But I'll never be going down that road again. <laughs> After the break, we'll be celebrating Celebrity Big Brother's ultimate highs and lows. From those who had momentous meltdowns... No! Now let me out of it. How dare you! ..to the ones that emerged victorious. Ryland! <laughs> Welcome back to Celebrity Big Brother. The best, the worst and the unforgettable. In our next category, stand back, because these guys are ready to blow. It's time to count down our top five magnificent meltdowns. My God, you're really putting yourself on the line. 
if you go into Celebrity Big Brother. When people do this, they do this at their own peril. We've seen celebrity after celebrity bounce into the house in a jolly good mood and then curl up in a ball and start crying. We're terrible, aren't we? We love to see people having a meltdown. At times you want to strangle people, but bite your lip, count to ten and get on. At number five is a man with a serious soft drink addiction. It's celebrity big brother legend, John McCrerick. If you said the name John McCrerick to most people, they just think, oh, isn't that that big, fat, sweaty, sexist pig? And they'd probably be right. I think John McCrerick's image is all about winding people up and pushing their buttons, and that's exactly what he did on Celebrity Big Brother. Oh, you want to so win so <laughs> fucking desperately, you do. Please, please, good luck to you. John McCrerick is up his own arse. I mean, his, his Diet Coke rant is still one of the classic Celeb Big Brother moments. John, why do you feel the Big oh, Brother I, I, I'm, I'm not you. talking to you. Why should I talk to you? My Diet Coke's in my milk. I'm entitled to them. He sort of becomes another person. He's like a, a Jekyll and Hyde, and he becomes horrendous. Until I get the dark coats back, I'm having nothing to do with anything out there. Nothing. You can say what you like. I'm sick of you. Celebrity Big Brother have got him raving like a mad fishwife over cans of Diet Coke. It's bloody genius. They're so smart. Have you talked to the group and asked whether they would be prepared to sacrifice anything of theirs in exchange for your fizzy drinks? I wouldn't ask them. No! Now let me out of here. How dare you! Believe me, he is as obnoxious in the flesh as you think he is on the telly. I just loved him. I actually would love my own John at home just to sit there and mug me off all day. It'd be amazing. Shut up! John McCrerick was exposed by Celebrity Big Brother, but he loved every single second of it. Go figure. Would I change anything? No. At four, it's TV icon Michael Barrymore. I think for some celebs, um, Celebrity Big Brother can be a last chance saloon, and for Michael Barrymore, Michael it definitely Barrymore. was. Oh. <sighs> I think my favourite Barrymore moment, and I know you're not meant to laugh at these kind of things, was when he just did go a little bit freaky in the kitchen and started doing an Adolf Hitler impression. Stand for you! He thought it was funny, and he carried on. He was in his own little world. He was probably thinking, yep, this is going to get me back on the Royal Variety performance. <laughs> He'd done all the hard work. He'd persuaded the show's bosses to give him a chance on the show, a chance to redeem himself and to get his career back. And then he goes and fucks it up by doing Adolf Hitler impressions. Please welcome Franken von Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> and nice to see you, Adolf. <laughs> With Michael as well, he'd probably be aware, uh, like all of us are, that as soon as you do anything that's slightly non-PC, I mean, look at me, that you're going to get in trouble. So, did he do the Hitler uh, thing? Is it impossible? Can you not do impressions of Hitler? I don't know. Sometimes you can actually see into the person's mind, are they doing this to cause controversy, or are they just being themselves? Well, Michael it is probably his own worst enemy, from being the genius that he was on television to what he has become. It's very sad, because he did have a great talent. Half of it's telling me to get up and go out of here. Half of it's telling me to stay. With Michael Barrymore, people just felt sorry for him. They saw him as a victim. He broke down constantly. But he was almost too broken. What is wrong with a grown man crying? Nothing. You're not now, are you? Oh, Michael, come in here. Come on, don't be silly. Like all of us, he let it get to him a little bit. He started to take life too seriously. Three meltdowns for the price of one in a notorious night in Big Brother history. It's Denise Welsh, Playboy twins Carissa and Christina, and glamour model Nicola McLean. Me, the twins, and Denise Welsh were all dancing on the sofa to Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. That's what we Denise thought it was funny to pull one of the twins' pyjama bottoms down. She didn't react well to this, and it all kicked off. I don't know if I'm OK with her. 
Denise just pulled one of their trousers down. A girl that poses naked, she pulls her trousers down, uh, and it was a big hoo-ha. I know that you guys roll your cameras 24 hours a day, and I know you got that shot, and you're going to show that on TV, and I'm going to sue you for it. So I want to leave now. This is a serious matter. This isn't some stupid shit. I mean, who were those so-called Playboy twins anyway? Denise Welsh was only being a laugh. She is a laugh. She's up for fun. Pulling down their knickers when they pull down their knickers for a living? Big deal. Get over it. Everybody knows Carissa's a little bit reserved. So what if Carissa well, she just get a tits out for a living, and you've got to accept oh, that. Not for a living, Denise, for no. a fucking magazine. So don't tell my me. Christina, my sister's had her tits you need out to for calm a living. Down. Christina, no, shut what up, I'm saying is, have it out. I stupidly got myself involved because I was trying to defuse the situation. I'm going to step in now, whether I'm right and wrong, and say that I was a page free girl for a lot of years, okay? Had you have pulled my pants down or my top up, I would have been a upset. Joke. I would have, I'm not cool with showing my body. But Nicola, I have I'm not a lot of things to you that I've wanted to say over the last couple of days, right? <laughs> OK, I'm not going to get into that now because I'm not going to do it. I still don't really know how it got so big. So we had a slight row about that and then it just continued and continued. I want to go home. This is Big Brother. Nicola. I don't give a fuck! I want to go home, so let me in the diary or let me out. I don't give a fuck! Nicola. There are people in the diary room currently. I don't care! Then fucking tell me somewhere else to go! I don't want to be here with these people anymore! I think what people don't understand about the Big Brother house is it is a pressure cooker, and I just boiled over. I think it's easy to have a meltdown on Big Brother because there's nowhere to run away to. <laughs> Fuck this fucking, fucking nightmare house! Big Brother understands the situation is challenging. Big Brother thinks you can deal with the situation and move forward. Do you agree? Yeah. And I just... I don't think I could do this without my sister. And I'm sorry. And I love you. I, love you. <laughs> I do love the twins, actually. But I think they've done that for attention. I think they've done that for attention. I understood if th that she pulled... Uh, her underwear down and everything, but there was nothing that they've not shown on the TV previously, so uh, I love Denise anyway. She was like a mum to me, so she could pull my trousers down if she wants. I haven't stayed in touch with Denise, no, and I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't piss on her if she was on fire. At number two, it's the fall of a 70s disco icon. It's Leo Sayer. Leo Sayer was hysterical. Reduced to a quivering wreck. I need some more underpants, big brother. I've run out of underwear. Leo, Big Brother provides housemates with washing powder in order for housemates to wash their clothes. Big Brother, I don't wash my own clothes. I don't know if Leo uh, was, was being maybe a little bit diva, but I don't know, maybe he actually thought that, you know, it is a TV show, so obviously we won't have to do our own washing. Big Brother has provided you with washing powder. Well, then I quit, Big Brother. I quit. I'm not washing my clothes in front of other people. That's demeaning. I think Leo Sayer, at the time, still thought he was as famous as Leo Sayer in the 80s, so when Big Brother wouldn't let him have his underpants, that was it, that was the final straw. If you won't give me any more underwear, I have no recourse then to walk through the fire safety doors and leave the house. Leo Sayer, I thought, was sad um, because, you know, I'm a great fan of his and somehow he'd lost it. He'd lost the twinkle in his life and he'd lost a lot of other things as well. What was it that Leo Sayer objected to about doing a little hand washing of his own wife front? No one understood. Right, I'm leaving the house, guys, because they will not provide me with underwear. No, stop. Oh, don't be down. I'm going no. to the doors now. I'm off. To see someone like that, just sulking like a little kid before finally kicking down the door and legging it out of the house, you know, that's TV gold. For some vulnerable flowers, they just cannot cope with the Celebrity Big Brother house. Oh, my God! He is his business. No, no, no. He's gone out, he's gone. He has gone. gone, he's gone. Fuck this, I'm out of here. This is bullshit. No, no, wait, wait. Fuck wait. off. Just it together. Wait, wait. Fuck Leo, off, Leo, get out of my Leo, way. Leo, Leo. Fuck off, Leo, you don't... Down. You've got Leo, nothing down. to do with me. Fuck off. Calm down. Fuck off. Calm down. Rather than Gary, make here. a dignified exit, they either break down or escape, 
or have a tantrum or do all three. It's fucked. You're just playing a stupid fucking game. I'm out of here. I'm out. I want to go. I don't think you can have the money. I don't care. Have the fucking money. It's over. Fuck off. Fuck off. Don't touch me, you bastard. Boom. Bang went his reputation. I think Leo Sayer is a great example of how you cannot hide in the Big Brother house. There is nowhere to hide, you know. If you've got skiddy pants, you're going to have to wash your skiddy pants and the public's going to find out about it. That's what you signed up for, so don't complain about it. I think this is all a sick joke. And I didn't think it would be like this when I came in. I thought you would treat me properly. I wonder when he sits and reflects on a dark night and he remembers his, his uh, escapades, that he actually went nuts about not washing his pants. I wonder if they ever realised just how stupid they've looked. Might make me look stupid, but I think it will make you look even more stupid. And at number one, it's Celebrity Big Brother's very first and most infamous meltdown. It can only be Vanessa Feltz. There's no question, I am the poster girl for Big Brother meltdowns, and I'm extremely proud of it. Using the chalk for anything other than the task is against the rules. What's the thing? Vanessa Feltz, brilliant. I loved her. This is Big Brother. Would Vanessa please come to the diary room? No. <laughs> I think she shouldn't have done Big Brother, but I think she did it, and I think it was a little unfortunate, especially when she went mad. You're losing the plot there, Vanessa. Yeah. I think she was the first big, massive meltdown. Everybody was talking about it. And when I watched it, she was a little bit scary. One more time. This is Summer. Big Brother. Would Vanessa please come to the diary room? No, fuck off. When Big Brother demanded the chalk back, I said, fuck off. And that was brilliant, because I was the first person in the entire world ever to tell Big Brother to fuck off. I mean, that is a scary woman. Vanessa Feltz in full fly is... Poosh, you don't want to be in her way. Vanessa, you're starting to scare me now. Good. Just enjoy it. When I watch that meltdown back, I think, blimey, Vanessa, keep calm, dear, don't get so aerated. But at the time, it will seem like a hugely important deal. I'm still not quite sure why, really. There are times when you have to look away. Uh, it's the exact opposite of those road crashes where everybody shouldn't look, but as you've been queuing for 20 minutes, you can't help but look at the mangled wreckage. That's what I felt with Vanessa. I couldn't actually... That was when I had to look away. It was too upsetting. Hello, Vanessa. Who's that? This is Big Brother. Oh, hi there. Would you like to talk about how you're feeling? I don't think I can possibly endure the mass humiliation of, you know, everybody hated you so much you had to go kind of thing. You know, how many million people voted and said, fuck off, Vanessa, because we hate you. Have you tried talking to anyone about how you feel? Not really. I'm not sure anyone cares less. Her meltdown was, was, was embarrassing. Knowing her, too, I was a little shocked and I just felt sorry for her. She was only in there for a few days, so to have flipped after that short space of time is amazing, but, you know, that, that's kind of the benchmark for every other meltdown we've had since. If you told me 15 years ago that people would still be talking about that moment with the chalk to this very day, what would I have done? I probably would have... Uh, I would have run away to Australia and changed my name. So we're almost there and have just about covered everything that makes this show so special. But there's one thing that every celebrity Big Brother needs, a winner. And it's time to celebrate with three of our favourites. It's very difficult to try and work out what the British public look for in a winner. Because if we knew the answer to that, all of the people that went in there would, would try and win. They'd try and do it a little better. To be a good winner, you have to be yourself. And if you're going to be anything other than that, you've got to play it right. Frankie Howard said this, what the public want is honesty and sincerity. And if you can fake that, you've got a chance of winning. In third place is our Essex boy, Dung Good, and who's now part of the Big Brother family. It's Ryan. I can now reveal the celebrity housemate with the most votes, and the winner of Celebrity Big Brother is... He's a great ambassador for the Big Brother, but he is fantastic and a very, very worthy winner. Yeah. Congratulations, Rylan. You are the winner Bye. of Celebrity <laughs> Big Brother. Rylan has got to be one of my favourite all-time housemates because, you know, this guy's funny, he tells you how it is, 
you know, argumentative, not afraid to speak, not afraid to say what he really means, emotional. This has been brilliant, so thank you, everyone. I loved Rylan. Rylan was just fantastic. He's made for this show, he's made for reality TV. People love him, I love him. Sit here and say I've won Celebrity Big Brother, it's just the cherry on the cake. I'm the biggest fan of Big Brother. I always have been, I always will be. And not only winning the show changed my life, but it made me an even bigger part of the show. How does it feel for me to actually what? tell you you are the winner of Celebrity Big Brother? Do you know what? what? Coming from you, right, this is like a dream come true. That honestly. deserves a kiss. Come on, there we go. Well done. She's featured throughout our show, but let's take another moment to look at why Denise Welsh won the hearts of the nation. I can now reveal the housemate with the most votes and the winner of this year's Celebrity Big Brother is... Denise! No! I'm so proud of you. Oh, come on. Denise, my darling! Denise Welsh got her tits out in the hot tub. Anyone deserves to win for that. You are the winner of Celebrity Big Brother. I think the papers portrayed her bad. She was so loving in the house. For me, she was like mine and Frankie's mum figure, you know. She was very, very endearing because she was so vulnerable and she was so real and she was obviously in some kind of personal turmoil and that was all borne out when she won the show. I think people liked her more. They felt that she was frail. They felt that she was human, just like everybody else. They felt that she wasn't perfect, but who is? Denise Welsh was a worthy Celebrity Big Brother winner. Do you know, I'm not going to be modest. It feels bloody brilliant. Yes. And finally, he went from zero to hero, proved his critics wrong, and triumphantly took the celebrity Big Brother crown. It's comedy superstar, Jim Davidson. I can now reveal the celebrity housemate with the most votes, and the winner of Celebrity Big Brother is... I sat with Daffy on a chair. We were the last two, and I could hear him saying, please, please let me win, please let it be me. And I wanted him to win. I, I really did. I thought this is going to be great for Dappy if he wins this. And I'm, uh, I was really, really hoping he'd win. Did I fuck? I was glad I won. Congratulations. You are the winner of Celebrity Big Brother. Jim Davidson, I thought, really did well. And interestingly enough, I didn't think he was going to win. I wasn't that surprised when Jim Davidson won Celebrity Big Brother last January because it's a game show and Jim Davidson is a game show king. Bye bye house. Me, I was just trying to be me, warts and all, because I think that's what the public can see through. I think Jim Davidson was a great winner. He was supposed to be going in the year before, which was my series, and it was taken away from him through no fault of his own, and he had a lot to prove. And what a journey to say a year on, he done it. I never thought I'd get here in a million years. This is overwhelming. All the people cheering and soaking wet, all, it's just overwhelming, it really is. <laughs> in just a few days, a whole new bunch of celebrities will be entering the Big Brother house. But before they do, we thought they might appreciate a bit of advice. After all, we don't want them making a fool out of themselves now, do we? OK, you housemates for the next series. Don't forget, we'll all be watching, so be entertaining and give us some fun. If there's a girl you fancy in there, kiss her. If there's a boy you fancy in there, touch him. <laughs> Yummy. Get as pissed as you can, have as many fights as you can, and shag as many people as you can. Stay away from cheesy boy band singers. That's not advice to win, that's advice to make it entertaining. Get out of your own ass. Go in there and entertain us. Don't regret anything, don't worry about nothing. If you want to get drunk and get in the pool when your boobs come out, who cares? Learn. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> My advice to all future housemates, in the first few days, do nothing to antagonise anyone. You'll always be caught in the final furlong if you do. If somebody does something wrong, it can affect the entire house. So be good children. My advice to the next housemates, don't do it. Bite your tongue, don't show your true colours, look after number one, and for God's sake, don't discuss nominations. Have fun! Don't talk about the other housemates behind their back. Enjoy it. 
Let's have sex, drugs and rock and roll. And stay away from the chalk. That's it for our journey down memory lane, but fear not, our famous doors will be opening again in the next few days. I'll see you then. Can't wait, Emma. And that new Celebrity Big Brother starts next Wednesday at 9. I know where I'll be.